Okay, hello everyone. My name is TJ. I'm the electrician. Uh, basically, this is a how-to video on how to do electrical work. It's a series of videos that I'm going to start doing. Um, the first one is how to replace a receptacle. Now, um, I like to use this uh, screwdriver right here. It's a multi-screwdriver uh, above any other screwdriver, but you, basically what you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver and a flathead. Uh, this one has a big uh, Phillips and a big flathead, and on the other side, of the screwdriver it has a small flat head and a small Phillips head that's inside there um, basically I use this tool for almost everything that I do in the trade um, this is my tester this is another uh, item you're gonna be needing uh, you don't need a digital one like I have but you can find yourself a cheap tester at Home Depot uh, so you can test the outlet beforehand now basically it's, uh, this tester has off voltage amp and ohms um, that's a hold button and on the top is where you measure amperage for this basic uh, how to all you're gonna need the tester for is basically to test the outlet so we're gonna go ahead and uh, test the outlet it doesn't really matter for alternating current which lead you put in which hole basically you put one leg into one hole and one into the other hole and you should get 120 volts from 120 to 125 volts is okay. Anything else than that, then you might have a problem. You have your LED light that turns on, basically telling you that there is voltage within the outlet. Um, after you've uh, test, uh, see there's voltage. I've skipped the whole turning off the breaker part, but you have to turn off the breaker. And now we come back after I've turned the breaker off, and uh, we're going to test, and you'll notice that it is now at one, two zero volts which basically means there is no more voltage and there is no more danger now that you have turned the voltage off um, let's go ahead and get your multi screwdriver with a small flat uh, side on it and let's remove the two screws that hold the cover plate in once you remove this you're gonna find uh, you're gonna find yourself an outlet of course with uh, two yokes that are held in place by two simple screws basically you have an outlet now for the next step of this uh, removal I would I usually switch around I use the bigger Phillip tip but if you have two screwdrivers you can use your Phillip tip whatever Phillip you have is good uh, basically you unscrew the top screw you unscrew the bottom screw I usually sometimes use a drill too then um, you carefully grab um, the outlet by the top and the bottom yoke this is the safest place to grab an outlet even though you've already turned off the electrical power, this is always the best uh, practice is to do this. Um, now I usually turn it around. I inspect the, the outlet, make sure everything is okay, make sure there's no wires messed up. That's uh, your ground wire. It's always the bare or green wire. The black wire, which is uh, your hot, which is the most dangerous one of all three, and your white wire. Uh, basically, that's what your outlet is comprised of, uh, three wires. Sometimes there might be more than three, but basically they're attached only supposed to be three attached to the outlet. Again, this is for basic uh, removal and replacement of an outlet. Anything else uh, that's more complicated, I do suggest that you call a qualified electrician to do the work for you. I'm not advocating in my channel at all that you do electrical work if you're an unqualified individual. Alright, basically the first thing to do, and it's always a, a rule of practice, is to remove the black wire first. Now these, some like cheap electricians like to plug them into the back of the outlet, but the proper way to do it is to wrap it around a screw, which I will be demonstrating when I reinstall the outlet. Now a quick tug and a twist on the outlet usually pulls the wire out. The black wire came out pretty readily, but the white wire, as you can see, is not. Now in this case, it's very simple. Um, you have yourself a pair of strippers. Uh, cutters like these or any kind of cutters that have uh, a cutting edge to it. You cut the wire as close as you can to the back of the outlet and now you have freed the wire from the outlet. Um, this is the green wire. Usually is identified by it being bare or green and uh, it's basically you unscrew it. It's uh, tied on there and once you remove it this is what you got. That's your 
hot side. That's where your black wire goes, and that's where your white wire goes. Your white wire goes on the silver one, and your green wire goes on the green one, on the green colored screw. Um, some electricians plug them into the holes in the back. Um, I personally, like I said, do not like to plug them into those holes, but each one of those holes that corresponds to the silver side and the copper colored side are go to the corresponding wires. Once more, the black wire goes to the copper colored screw and the white wire goes to the silver colored screw. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is show you that it needs to be longer. Typically, um, you're supposed to have like six inches out of the box, but the electricians who worked on the house originally um, left it too short. So we're going to work with what we got here. Um, I separate the wires to work with each wire individually, and I grab my strippers, which come with a groove in it to strip wire down to its appropriate uh, size. So I stripped it down to uh, number 12, which is the size of the wire. And um, basically, it's ready to be installed on the outlet if you plug it into the back of the outlet. I'm not going to go ahead and give you a how-to to do that because I'm, I'm not in agreement with uh, doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I believe is the proper way to install an outlet. Um, with your strippers, uh, some strippers come built in with a tiny little hole on the side where I'm pointing at to make a, a curve in the wire. Or you could use the tip. Basically, you just make a little hook in the wire so that it hooks around uh, a screw that's the size of an 832. All right, so basically the white wire goes on the silver screw, and the black wire goes on the copper screw. This is the black wire here. I know it looks white, but it's got paint on it. So basically it's mostly black. Um, you want to notice that it's black, and if there is paint on it, uh, you know that it's black if it's just paint. So don't look at that as a white wire. The white wire is solidly white. And then the ground wire, which is usually the bare uh, conductor or the bare wire, goes on the green colored screw. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue on. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a loop in each one of the tips that I have stripped. I've only stripped one, the white one, because uh, the black one pulled out easily, as you remember, so I didn't have to strip that one. But basically, as you can tell, I've created a nice, comfortable loop at the end of the black wire. There you go. Um, I've created already one in the white, and now I'm going to put those out of the way, and the green wire... I'm going to strain out and kind of uh, mold into shape to fit underneath the ground screw, the, which is the green one, the green screw. There it is. A hook on each one of the wires. Now, the same way that you removed the outlet by removing the, uh, the black wire first and the green wire last, the first one to go on is going to be the green wire. This is a safety measure. Make sure you're properly grounded as you're installing the outlet. You basically just hook the hook that you created around the screw and tighten the, uh, the, the screw down on the wire. Sometimes you might want to uh, clinch the wire together or make a nice little tight loop. You see how I gave it a nice tug? I mess with it make sure that the wire's on there good and it doesn't fall off. Now we go ahead and we continue doing the same for the other three wires. As I showed you before, the white one goes on the silver screw which usually in American made products which I try to only deal with American made products um, is on the same side as the ground screw so you have the silver uh, and the green are on the same side for the neutral and the ground now also there's two screws involved in the uh, in the neutral side so you can put two wires on there which I don't do either because I think it's a bad practice I like to splice them but if there is two screws, make sure that they're both down all the way. The one that doesn't have a wire and the one that does have a wire, uh, make sure you screw them down fully. Do not leave any any screws uh, any out. Um, same thing here. Let's go ahead and uh, screw down the unused uh, tap for the black wire fully. And then grab the black wire and hook it around the copper screw like that, pretty much and then uh, screw it down as much as you can. Now, you don't want to over-torque it and break it, but you don't want to leave it loose. You want a nice, tight fit um, that's never going to come off and not create any kind of resistance in the lines. Um, the next step is basically tucking the outlet and the wires back into the box. Now, as I'm explaining right, right there, everything's ready to go. Um, the box wasn't properly installed by the electricians that built this house. The box isn't proper. It's too deep into the wall. 
So when you get these wires in there, you got to make sure that you put a nice little bend, one up and one down. Make sure the white and the ground are going in on the left side. And the black wire is tucking in on the right side so that they, they don't come into contact with the other wires. Uh, not that anything will happen. It's just proper uh, way of doing things. Um, now with your screwdriver, the same one you used to undo it, you screw in the top screw. In this case, the top screw is not going in because the box wasn't properly installed. So as you can tell, it's still very loose. It's not really going in there. So we're going to go ahead and put the bottom one in first to kind of tighten it in, get it into place. There you go. Now it's nice and tight. As you see, I pulled on it. Now we're going to go ahead and try to get that one in, which is barely catchy because the box was uh, laid too deep into the wall. So typically you need a longer screw. But as you can see, it caught. It's nice and flush. Now what you typically want once you at this point is you screw in the screw um, where you, you know, until the outlet is in there that the top part is flush so that you can put the cover on. And then that middle piece lays flush with the cover. So that middle piece is going to stick out a little from the wall and the yoke is going to be the flush part. Then with the other side of the screwdriver, you just tighten down the, the, the plate. Make sure you didn't lose the screws when you undid them. Um, I typically like to put the screws so that they're up and down, but some people like them side to side, uh, like that is side to side. Or I like to put them up and down as for aesthetic purposes. Now before we finish the job, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on the breaker. That's done already. I clipped the going turning on the breaker out of the video. And we're going to go ahead and uh, test the outlet uh, with the tester that I showed you earlier on. If you have a tester, uh, so you can grab a cheap one a cheap one for like 10 bucks. Basically, I have a digital one. But as you can see, the outlet's back on. We're at 123 volts. And you have now learned how to replace an outlet.